So everyone brought a bottle of wine tonight. Um, we'll start with Doug. Doug, uh, tell us what you brought and uh, why you brought it. So I brought a Pulsar, sometimes called Plusar, um, if you're a wine nerd or you're from Jura. Um, and the reason why I brought it is because I really like the grape. It's a bit of an ornery sort of difficult grape, uh, but it, to me it's synonymous with, with Jura um, because it is a native grape. Um, Poussin and Sauvignon sort of seem to go hand in hand. They also tend to grow on the same sort of soils, which are sort of grey marls or red marls, so often they're co-planted. The essence of Jura red wines is, is their freshness, their lightness and their drinkability. Jean-Francois Ganeva, uh, he's in the south of Jura, not in a little hamlet called Rotalier, and it's not really an area where a lot of people w work, so he's pretty sort of unique. When he first started making wines many years ago, um, the company I work for received big allocations of his wines and he basically did his sort of like his work experience in, in Burgundy and wanted to make sort of quite Burgundian style wines and his whites are quite Burgundian and his reds but his reds were sort of Burgundian in the wrong sense of the word because to me Jura has a very sort of unique uh, the wines have a very unique feel and I, and I want the wines to really reflect where they come from and, and reflect the culture and reflect the sort of food but he was making sort of Burgundian reds new oak cold maceration really dark, intense, almost chocolatey wines. Anyway, so he certainly changed his style of winemaking, I guess about seven or eight years ago. He started pursuing a more natural path. He started to identify terroir and what, which were good vineyards. But Pulsar is definitely the one he makes least of. Um, I mean, just literally two barrels. And uh, funny enough in, I th well, I say funny enough, that's not funny at all, really. And I think in the 216 vintage, one of the barrels exploded. So it's, so, so there's like one barrel. So, so allocations were halved and the allocations were already tiny. So everyone was on their knees begging for, for nothing, really. Um, but each year that went by, his wines became more and more minimalist. And to me, I love a wine which has almost nothing, you know, to play with. You know, it's just a line of, of, of fruit or, or minerality. It's lean, it's pure, it's fresh. There's no fat on it. It's absolutely light and bright and crisp and clean. This wine uh, I chose in the 2014 vintage, which was quite a difficult vintage. So ripeness was, 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 was difficult, uh, and yet it achieved its full ripeness at 10%. And 10% in, in an era of global warming is, and, and full ripeness, is, to me, is, is admirable. And uh, it made us think that actually, if we were to plant a grape variety in the UK, we would plant Pulsar because it, it would be ripe at 8%. And it didn't have to have any color. And Pulsar has no color at all. So it looks a bit like rosé in the glass. And the difference between a Pulsar rosé and a Pulsar red is, is indistinguishable almost. So really, really pale, really pure. And of course, it doesn't take oak, new oak at all. So it's all about big old barrels, you know, foudre. And, it's, and, and they're just there to caress the wine and caress the red fruit. And the fruit is red fruit, and I love red fruit. I love it on Pinot Noir. I love it on Plusard and Trousseau. I, lo I love elegance and freshness and brightness and, and beauty and transparency. And this wine has all of those. So if you notice the color, it's, it's amazing. You know, it's so light. And sometimes we're looking for density uh, of color. And, and, but actually what I like to do is to look and, and actually if you hold it up, um, it, it's, it seems to be almost like browning or orangey brown, uh, but uh, it really holds, it's really attractive the way it holds the light. And I always think that's a sign of a really healthy wine. But that is the classic Poussard color when you, when you hold it up. It, and as I say, it looks a bit like a sort of like a, a slightly sort of muddy colored rosé. Um, and then um, on, on the nose, you say I'm a real sucker for sort of red fruits and a slight earthiness um, in terms of the uh, in terms of the aromatics. It's not a complex spectrum, um, and although it's only ten percent, but I, I, I still feel that it fills out the mouth with interesting, subtle flavors. But Pulsar has always been the sort of like, although it's this, it's it's the most grown red grape in, in Jura, like so precedes uh, Pinot and Trousseau. Um, it's the one that you don't see very often on wine lists in this country, uh, because I think people find it very difficult to understand. They're saying, where's the wine gone? You know, like, where's the color? Can I have some more color, some more extraction, some more, you know, like richness? And you're looking for something that isn't there and has never been there. So just leave it to be what it is.